Glorfindel was tall and straight, his hair was of shining gold, his face fair and young, and fearless and full of joy, his eyes were bright and keen, and his voice like music, on his brow sat wisdom, and in his hand was strength. Today we narrate the life and story of Glorfindel, the chief of the house of the Golden Flower. Glorfindel is born sometime during the years of the trees, in Valinor, the realm of the Valar in the west of the earth. Although he is an old Lorin elf of great importance and power, his ancestors and relatives are not recorded. The only clue we get from the Professor Tolkien about Glorfindel's family is that he is a kinsman of Turgon, son of Ingolfin and great-grandfather of Elrond Half-Elven, but this statement remains obscure. Glorfindel's long golden hair indicates that he might trace his ancestry to one of the Vanyar, the first kindred of the elves, as the Noldor are known for their dark hair and none of the known Noldorin elves have golden hair, except for those who come from Noldorin and Vanyar in intermarriages, like the Golden House of Finarfin, the house to which Galadriel belongs. His name is Sindarin, and it means golden haired. In 1495 of the Years of the Trees, Ungoliant, an evil spirit of spider form, and Melkor, destroy the holy two trees of Valinor. Melkor steals the three Silmarils, the greatest of Feanor's creations, and they flee to Middle-earth. Then Feanor and his seven sons swear a terrible oath to regain the jewels, and taking a large part of the Noldorin elves of Valinor with them, they rebel against the Valar. Glorfindel does not wish to join this rebellion, but in the end he follows the second house of the Noldor, the house of Ingolfin, due to his kinship with Turgon. From what is said of Glorfindel in the Silmarillion and the Lord of the Rings, it is evident that he was an elder of high and noble spirit, and it can be assumed that though he left Valinor in the host of Turgon, and so incurred the ban, he did so reluctantly because of kinship with Turgon and allegiance to him. When the Noldor reached Alqualonde, a seaside city of the Falmariels, Feanor attempts to steal their ships in order to cross the Great Sea. Thus the first kinslaying occurs, which is the first of the three conflicts where elves slay one another. Glorfindel, being reluctant in the first place to leave the Blessed Realm, takes no part in the king slaying at Alqualonde. After the king slaying and the stealing of the ships, the host of Ingolfin, being abandoned by Feanor, is forced to endure the perilous Helcaraxe. As there is no other way to reach Middle-earth, Glorfindel most probably follows Turgon, with his daughter Idril, to the grinding ice. Through many hardships, they reach the Heather Lands. Afterwards, Glorfindel's deeds are vague. Turgon establishes an elvish kingdom in Evrast, and rules there for about a century. Thereafter, he abandons this realm and leads his foe to the great city of Gondolin in the hidden valley of Tumladen. The city is full wrought in 116 of the first stage, and Turgon's entire host secretly removes to Gondolin. Glorfindel, being a great follower of Turgon, is appointed as a lord of one of the twelve houses of the city the chief of the house of the Golden Flower. In Gondolin, he is dearly beloved by everyone. Three centuries ahead, in 472 of the First Age, the Nirnaith Arnoidiad, the Battle of Anambertiers, ignites. 
Glorfindel joins his king in an attempt to assist the elven men against the forces of Morgoth. But soon the battle turns against them, and Turgon with his people retreat to the pass of Sirion. Upon their way back, Glorfindel and Ecthelion, as captains of Turgon, guard the flanks to left and right, so that none of the enemy might pass them by. Thus, through their efforts, and the sacrifice and capture of Hurin Thalion, the lord of the Manish realm of Dor Lomin, the elves managed to reach Gondolin safe. Moving forward 38 years, on the mid-summer of 510 of the First Age, Glorfindel, Turgon, Idril Celebrindal, the king's daughter, the man Tuor, who has now become her husband, their son, Earendil, and the rest of the Gondolindrim celebrate the festival of the Gates of Summer, in which they sing as the sun rises, but the light appears in the north instead of the east. Morgoth, having discovered the location of the hidden city, has sent his armies of Balrogs, Orcs, Wolves, and Dragons to assail Gondolin. Thus the Gondolindrim, master, and prepare to defend their city against the forces of the Dark Lord. Alongside King Turgon stands Glorfindel and his House of the Golden Flower. There stood the House of the Golden Flower, who bear a red sun upon their shield, and their chief, Glorfindel, bear a mantle so broidered in threads of gold, that it was diapered with celandine as a field in spring, and his arms were damascened with cunning gold. As the armies of Morgoth approach the valley of Tumladen, Turgon calls a council to which Golden Glorfindel and all the captains and nobles of Gondolin attend. There it is decided that the Gondolindrin will defend the city instead of leaving it. So the host of Morgoth reaches the city and the fall of Gondolin begins. Glorfindel and his warriors of the Golden Flower move towards the gate to surprise the foe upon his left flank, but while doing so, they are themselves ambushed by a force of orcs led by Balrogs in the Great Market to the east of the city. There Glorfindel and his house fight bitterly, holding their ground for hours, until a fire drake Nukam from the bridge overwhelms them. Glorfindel cuts his way out very hardly, and with few of his warriors, leaving the great market in a waste of flames, and he retreats to the square of the king. Glorfindel had previously wisely sent messengers to King Turgon, calling for reinforcements, and these elves appear just in time to save him from being overwhelmed by the armies of Morgoth. In the square of the king, he finds Tuor and other captains of Gondolin. Then Glorfindel and Tuor gather all the warriors they can find, and bar all the entrances save the one on the south. There they withstand another onslaught of the demons of the enemy. It is during this desperate act of defense that Glorfindel and the other Gondolindrim decide that a way must be found to escape the city. Idril Celebrindal, the princess of Gondolin, out of her wisdom and foreboding, had long foreseen the sack of the city, and for this reason she had prepared Idril's secret way, a tunnel under the hidden city that led out of it. Thus, as King Turgon decides not to abandon his city, Tuor, who is aware of his wife's secret actions, gathers all those that are willing to follow him, and they head towards Idril's tunnel. On their way there, the enemy makes a great assault upon the band, but Glorfindel holds the rear valiantly, and many of the House of the Golden Flower fall there. Upon surviving this attack, they find Idril, and they head to her secret tunnel. Glorfindel, together with the royal couple, Idril and Tuor, cross the tunnel until they reach its end, and they head toward the encircling mountains. 
they reunite with Earendil, the couple's son, whom Idril had ordered her guard to protect, and they continue their journey with Glorfindel at the rear of the band, and Galdor, another captain of Gondolin, up front, until they reach the Kiri Thoronath, or the Eagle's Cleft. There they are ambushed by a force of orcs, led by a Balrog. Now Galdor and Glorfindel held their own, despite their surprise of assault, and many of the orcs were struck into the abyss, but the falling of the rocks was like to end all their valor, and the flight from Gondolin to come to ruin. At that moment, Glorfindel and the others are saved by Thorondor and the eagles, who slay many of the orcs. Then dreadful was their plight, and hardly would they have been saved by the valor of yellow-haired Glorfindel, chief of the house of the golden flower of Gondolin, had not Thorondor come timely to their aid. But the Balrog who leads the assault leaps in fury and passes by Glorfindel and his warriors, rushing to the women and the sick with a whip of flame. Then Glorfindel leapt forward upon him, and his golden armor gleamed strangely in the moon, and he hewed at that demon that it leapt again upon a great boulder, and Glorfindel after. Now there was a deadly combat upon that high rock above the folk, and these, pressed behind and hindered ahead, were grown so close that well nigh all could see, yet was it over ere Glorfindel's men could leap to his side. The ardor of Glorfindel drave that Balrog from point to point, and his mail fended him from its whip and claw. Now had he beaten a heavy swing upon its iron helm, now hewn off the creature's whip arm at the elbow. Then sprang the Balrog in the torment of his pain and fear, full at Glorfindel, who stabbed like a dart of a snake, but he found only a shoulder, and was grappled, and the sway to a fall upon the crack top. Then Glorfindel's left hand sought a dirk, and this he thrust up that it pierced the Balrog's belly nigh his own face, for that demon was double his stature, and it shrieked, and fell backwards from the rock, and falling, clutched Glorfindel's yellow locks beneath his cap, and those twain fell into the abyss. Now was this a very grievous thing, for Glorfindel was most dearly beloved, and lo, the dint of their foal echoed about the hills, and the abyss of Thorn Seer rang. Then at the death cry of the Balrog, the orcs, before and behind, wavered, and were slain or fled far away, and Thorondor himself, a mighty bird, descended to the abyss and brought up the body of Glorfindel, but the Balrog lay, and the water of Thorn Seer ran black for many a day far below in Tumladen. Still do the Eldar say, when they see good fighting at great odds of power against the fury of evil, Alas, tis Glorfindel and the Balrog, and their hearts are still sore for that fair one of the Noldor. Because of their love, despite their haste and their fear of the advent of new foes, Tuor let raise a great stone cairn over Glorfindel, just there, beyond the perilous way, by the precipice of Eaglestream, and Thorondor has let not yet any harm come thereto, but yellow flowers have fared thither and blow ever now about that mound in those unkindly places. But the folk of the golden flower wept at its building and might not dry their tears. Of this duel and of Glorfindel we are also told in the Silmarillion. Many are the songs that have been sung of the duel of Glorfindel with the Balrog upon a pinnacle of rock in that high place, and both fell to ruin in the abyss. Then Thorondor bore up Glorfindel's body out of the abyss, and they buried him in a mount of stones beside the pass, and the green turf came there, and yellow flowers bloomed upon it amid the barrenness of stone, until the world was changed. Thus, led by Tuor, son of Huor, the remnant of Gondolin passed over the mountains and came down into the Vale of Sirion, and fleeing southward by weary and dangerous marches, they came at length to Nantathren, the land of willows. 
There they rested a while and were healed of their hurts and weariness, but their sorrow could not be healed and they made a feast in memory of Gondolin and of the elves that had perished there, the maidens and the wives and the warriors of the king, and for Glorfinder the Beloved many were the songs they sang under the willows of Nantathren in the waning of the year. It is said that the tomb of Glorfindel, like certain other sites in Beleriand, survived the drowning of that country and that it protrudes above the waves. Glorfindel's Fea travels to the halls of Mandos, where he waits for his time to be judged by the Valar and to be re-embodied. Here ends the first part of Glorfindel's story. His life does not end here though. More adventures await him, as he is one of the few characters that we will follow into the afterlife. More about him in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one on My Govanen Namariel.